One more thing, mate. Do you remember that girl from Sector Zero? Troy. Yeah, she called to thank me after I got the antenna towers working. You should contact her when you get there. Well, good idea. Thanks, Brecken. Right. You take care. Keep the concept simple. Uh, yes, uh, we don't want to break it. I just want to talk. Try listening. The first bullet goes over your head. The next one goes through it. Stop it, Edward. You don't want to scare off someone who might be willing to help us. We don't know this arsehole from a plate of falafel. Don't argue with me. Let him in. Seems Errol wants to talk to you. There won't be any trouble. Do I look worried? Scared to death. He's perceptive. Come in, come in. I'm Errol. Kyle Crane. This is my niece, Salier, and her son, Aaron. Do forgive Edward, but he's completely right to be worried. We're being pursued by some very ruthless men. There's something oddly familiar about you. There should be. The campaign spent a lot of money putting my face all over town. Of course, you're Errol Asani, governor of the province. Governor of nothing, but Rise has decided that any political figure is a threat to him. So he's ordered my execution. They nearly killed me once already. That's how I lost my leg. And it seems they haven't given up. A squad of his thugs has tracked me to my last safe house in the slabs. Edward was just there. He says they're searching the area. It's only a matter of time before they show up here. Oh, sounds like you got quite a problem. I would pay you very well to resolve it. You know, people say that a lot to me. Trust me. What I can offer you can't be found anywhere else. At any price. And I'll think about it. Hey boys, what are we into this time? Do you understand what a battery is? Tall guy, you're overwhelming him! <sighs> Inside the engine compartment of a bus is a heavy rectangle. I know what a battery is. Okay. We need bus batteries with marine grade plates and rated at 1300 CCA or better. CCA means cold cranking amps. Obviously. That's a pretty big battery. Yes, easily 50 to 55 kilograms each. That's equal to uh, several large rocks. He's American. The metric system makes him angry. We will need three of them. Oh, you can use your brute strength. 
We know you primitives are keen to show how strong you are, to demonstrate physical prowess. You think it will attract females? Ugly and stupid, what else does he have? Oh, how does he live like that? Who knows? You have your instructions. Go do your uh, interpretation of them.
Here are your batteries. Better check them for bite marks. <laughs> well done. Well, no problems with the counting part of the mission? How much more do you need to do on this project of yours? None of your business. Goodbye. Kareem on the radio.
Can't get us all. I'll fall.
Kareem, it's Crane. Drop your weapon or you're dead. What the hell's your problem? This doesn't concern you. Sorry, Kareem, but Errol Asani is my concern. You're working for him? <laughs> you're a fool. I was his bodyguard, okay? After everything got fucked up and they built the wall, we got overrun. He got bitten on the leg. I took him to Randall, the only doctor I knew in the slums, and we cut it off. Clean. It was the only way. He would have turned if we hadn't done it. But the stubborn bastard never forgave us. So, we parted ways. So why are you trying to track him down now? Early on, the authorities evac'd all the political bigwigs out of the zone. Errol told us there was a chopper on the way to take us out with him. Then he got bitten. And with all the shit that happened after that, we missed the flight. But after you turned on the transmitter, we heard Errol asking for evac. And a couple of days ago, somebody responded. From outside. The old bastard's got a flight out, and I want a seat on it. All right, what about Rice? Does he care about this guy? Not a rat's ass. This was my business. I just want to get out of Haran. Yeah, well, it looks like you won't be making that flight, huh? That had already dawned on me. But I'd like to walk out of here. Look, if I see you again, I'm gonna assume the worst. You got it? Fair enough. Good luck, Crane. You're going to need it. Did you find them? Yeah, I did. Kareem's take on losing your leg was a bit different than yours. So, you talked to him. Edward was right. You do talk too much. You should leave the talking to people like me, and I'll leave the killing to people like you. However, Kareem was my bodyguard. He allowed me to get bitten, but I don't really blame him for that. Hey, he saved your life. By hacking off my leg? The morning I was bitten was the same day they began dropping suppressants. You understand? I told him the antigen drops would begin within hours. All they had to do was wait. Instead, he listened to that idiot doctor of his, and Karim held me down as the butcher chopped off my leg. Now he thinks I should fly him out of here. Well, I told him that's not gonna happen. You should have killed him. How about you leave the killing to people like me, huh? Quite right. I can get you out of here, Crane. Maybe I like it here. More likely you've made your own arrangements. Well, they won't work. You've been bitten. I can see it in your eyes. You'll never get past the NCUR quarantine. Past what? You see, you have no idea what's going on in the real world. Whoever you think you know, they're not political. And that's the only thing that's going to work now. You don't believe me? Then think of it as an ace up your sleeve, a backup plan. In case you haven't noticed, things don't always work out the way they're supposed to in this town. All right. If I'm interested, what happens next? Two things. The first is we need to paint some markers on the rooftop. There's no paint around here, so you'll have to go out and find some. And the second thing is... Well, let's just say you'll be leaving here in a better way than when you arrived. 
Go find some paint. There's a construction site nearby. You should look there. I'll tell you the next task when you've completed the first. Trust me, you're going to be very satisfied with the outcome. The roof's been painted. Good. Now there's one last thing. There's a duffel bag in a locker on the second floor. I'd like you to bring it to me. Since you'll probably open it, there's no point trying to hide the fact that there's $24.7 million inside it. One third of it is yours, if you can bring it back. Why doesn't Edward get it? Uh, there are too many biters there. I can't risk losing him. We'd be completely defenseless. And this money's yours? Most of the bank's depositors are no longer human. Stealing from them isn't a crime. Why have you never once taken the wallet of a biter that you've beaten to death? Okay, I'll recover the bag, but there's no calling in the evac until I say so. When I bring back the money, I'm taking the radio. That is unacceptable. Yeah, but you'll accept it anyway, because you have no choice. You're worse than cream. Very well. I accept your terms.
Empty, of course. Sorry, Crane. I had no choice. Cream said I was a fool to trust you. It's not what you think. I would have taken you with me. I contacted the evac when you were off getting the paint. I had to tell who would be on board, so I gave them your name. Now, I don't know who you are, but they knew. They said you were a no-go. So I had to send you on that phony money run. There is no money, at least none worth mentioning. I'm sorry, Crane, but I've got to get my family out of here. Go to the rooftop, and you'll find some things you can use. It's not what I promised, but it's the best I can do. Thank you for what you did for us, Crane. Good luck. Ah! <laughs> 
Hello, Crane. How's your day been? Hey, I thought we had an understanding. I think we have a better understanding now. But, if you want to shoot me... Another time, maybe. He did leave you a few goodies. I was going to nick them, but I thought, no, Crane's earned them. Let him have them. Well, you're almost okay, Kareem. <laughs> almost. Until next time. Good luck, Kareem. Exactly. What do you want? I'm looking for the saviors. Don't know what you're talking about. I'm one of Brecken's men from the tower. I don't care where you're from. Get your ass out of here or I'll stop being so fucking polite. Listen, I know you're smuggling people out of the slums. There's a girl who came through. Jade? I think you better get the hell out of here. No, just listen. I cut Rise up and now his whole goddamn gang is after me. I could use some cooperation here. You? You're the one who chopped Rice's hand off? Yeah. And now I have to get to Sector Zero. What's your name? Crane. Well, Crane, you're in for some heartbreak if you think going to Sector Zero will get you off Rice's shit list, but wait here. Crane. Yeah, that's what he said. Really? Are you sure? Oh, okay. Right. Come here. Okay, we'll get you to the other side. Right when? Right now. And what about payment? What you did to Rice, that's more than enough payment for us. Go to the collapsed tunnel that led to Old Town. Knock at the door that leads to the sewers. Someone will take good care of you. Will do. Thanks. Nah, man. Thank you. Oh man, this 
This means we can survive for the I next couple of days at least. To a German shepherd, not a son of a bitch with an assault rifle. Totally Afra has gas on the brain, but I guess you need it for his line of work. Takes all kinds to make a world. Even his kind, which is one of the worst kinds, if you ask me. He said I should give you this. Hitchhike better than anybody. Awful lot of trouble to go through though, just to try to pull a chicken wing out of a dog's mouth. But then he really did love his chicken wing. You found some crayons. Oh, fantastic, you're the best. The kids are gonna lose their minds, but in a good way. Here, take this. You'll make better use of it than I will. <laughs> <laughs>